Good evening, folks. Welcome to another session of the Sea of Glass. Try to understand that we are coming here without getting any money for it. We're coming here free for you guys to understand the coming of the time. We're living on the 21st century, which is the seventh day of the creation. This last thousand years here is the thousand years that you have to come to life to understand the truth. What happened to the past? You know, you were mixed up with religion and relig religion did not teach you to understand the spiritual part of yourself. They were teaching you the, sp the physical part. So I really want to come to understand the greatest spiritual part. Go ahead, Rita, read something else. It is very critical that you only worship one God. You cannot worship an image before the Lord your God, and you must offer all your sacrifices to him alone. You have to set your prayers in front of the Lord your God. Do not worship Jesus like the world of false religion does, where everybody's offerings are sacrifices to Jesus. I think the Bible explains it all, but Christians and Catholics don't read the Old Testament. Do not take the seed of the false prophet by believing in Jesus in front of the Lord. Oh. Understand well that these false prophets try very hard to teach people to worship Jesus. They pound their seed of falsehood inside the heart of mankind so deep and they make stiff-necked people out of the world where no one can understand how to worship the one true God. I, I want to talk about this because the time is coming. This is the last day, the seven days of the creation right now, the last thousand years, because we've been in the bondage of falsehood and the bondage of, you know, uh, following slavery into slavery of religion for decade and decade and thousands of years. Now we gotta come to understand that each one of you, each one of you has the power. I don't care how smart you are, you know, I don't care if you do understand or not, but you have to come to understand that you are the power to understand God. You have that power inside of you and you have to understand the Lord your God with the greatest power of all, to be able to understand that Jesus is not God. You cannot change God in the middle of the stream. You gotta learn to understand the Lord your God with all your soul, and you gotta come to understand the greatest power of all. There's only one God. It's never been done that God sent another God because that comes from the false prophet because they failed to understand that God was the truth. They failed to understand the Son of God was common sense. And they failed to understand that the Holy Spirit is the angel of reality. So you have to understand those three, uh, you know, cities of knowledge that's inside each one of us. You understand that you, you all have the truth and you all have common sense and you all have the angel of reality inside of you. If it's not real, don't believe it. If it's not true, don't believe it. But you gotta understand that these people are trying to push you. That's the serpent on the tree of knowledge with, with Eve. Try to fool the mind of mankind into a stupidity and ignorance of religion that they can watch any God they want. It's not true. You're only allowed to worship one God. Go ahead, Rita. Try to understand the evil seeds of the lies of the false prophets. Worship only the truth with the power to receive the Almighty God inside your heart by following His laws. Live in the protection of His laws by turning away from the false prophet and worshiping the Lord your God with all your soul and all that you have in human understanding that the Lord has given you. Okay. Now, I, I want to talk yeah. about that. You, you got to understand here, the Catholic Church has seven sacraments. They made that up. The whole thing is, is a made up, you know, what kind of a God that you have that would 
it, it's a little human being to understand that he is infallible. And he gives the power to his priest to change the scriptures. You see, this is what you really have to understand, that if Jesus is God and you think it's God, I tell you, I have the parable and I have the laws of God to tell you that God is the truth and his son is common sense. It's a spiritual power that you have inside of you to understand that there's a supreme God above you that is the truth. And you have to abide by the truth and the laws of truth. And you have to make yourself understand the laws of truth in order to come to the, the reality of what is. What is? God is the greatest power of all to understand the truth itself. And you have it inside of you, each one of you, just that you give it away to the false prophet. And they've been teaching you something that makes no sense. So you got to come back to yourself, look inside your heart, and look at what is the truth in reality, in common sense, and in the truth. But you got to understand that they work so hard to make you believe something else. They're the serpent on the, on the trees of knowledge. And you have to come to understand that the serpent will never feed you the truth because you don't have the truth. And that's what it's all about. You have to come to yourself and say, I am inside myself. You know, it's a product of the Lord God. He created me and he didn't leave me out of common sense and the truth and reality. He put it inside of each one of you. You have to look at it inside your soul. <coughs> look at the seven command and the seven sacrament of the Catholic Church there. What kind of a man has the power to take a glass of water and purify a child with it? It's a big lie. It does not the truth. Then you have the other one, you know, that you take forgiving sins. This guy can forgive sins because the Pope told him that he had the right to do that. So with a hand motion, they forgive your sin. That's not true. Make sure that you believe in only what's true inside of yourself. And then the, the Eucharist. That's the biggest joke ever. You take a man's piece, uh, body of 2,000 years, place it in a piece of bread, and feed it to the people. This is not the truth. The truth, this is not part of common sense. It's not part of reality. And it's, it's not part of the truth. You have to understand that they fool you with these falsehoods and they come to the understanding of a false God. Next thing you know, everybody believes in that false God. And that's what happened to the world. The world is in terrible shame right now because they fell for the, you know, the gold calf on the altar. They worship a man before the Lord. Jesus become the gold calf for them. And they come and understand the greatest power of all. To understand the scriptures, you have to read the Old Testament and you have to come to be born of spirit in the value of a spiritual understanding. The truth is a spirit. Common sense is a spirit and reality is another spirit. Those three things is what you have inside of yourself to understand that these seven sacraments are nothing more than, a, you know, a fabrication of stupidity that they invent it with your mind. You have to come to understand the truth. Worship God and God will tell you how to worship. Okay, go ahead, Rita. Now let's see what it is to worship God. Worshiping God is not going to church on Sunday or any other day of the week. This is where you pick up the evil seed and you think you are on the side of the Lord. Worshiping God is standing up on your own two feet using your own two hands to read the scriptures with your own heart and claiming the value of only one God in your life by rejecting all the lies of the false prophet. Stand on your own two feet to learn everything without asking anyone but the Lord your God for answers about the scriptures and the way life works between men. Make sure that you get all your information in your heart from the Lord 
Sometimes you may be wrong and you may understand something backward. But trust in yourself, but trust yourself to understand the almighty word of the Lord your God and the Lord will feed you with his mighty knowledge. You will be restored to your good deeds, good seeds, and no one will trick you to believe falsely. And if you do make a mistake with your own thinking and your own feelings, then just trust in the Lord and he will restore you to proper health and feelings in the understanding of truth. What I want to say here, God don't talk to you in words. He talks to you in your feelings. You know, just listen to your feeling inside yourself. Try to understand that God is the feelings that he placed inside of you. If you, they tell you something stupid, like, you know, you got to baptize this child here and I'll put a glass of water on him. You can't believe that. This is, you know, false magic. And the church is the first one to condemn false magic, but then they practice it. All of these things makes no sense and they don't make any part of the truth because it's not part of the truth. It's, it's a something, it's a religion that they made up to make you spend money to go to church, pay for baptism, pay for this, pay for, you know, first communion, pay for, you know, you gotta pay for all this stuff. And then finally, they put you in the grave with another price on it. You gotta understand. And especially the, the, the sacrifice of marriage. Who can believe that you have to give your soul to a, another person for the rest of your life. You can't do that because your feelings change all the time. You gotta understand that that's not true. They make you understand. They make a sacraments out of it. And they try to make you understand that this is not, that they're telling the truth and you have to listen to them. Otherwise you gotta go in the lake of fire. Believe me, they don't have the lake of fire. They do have the lake of fire with their falsehood but because the lake of fire is not a, f a real fire, it's the stupidity, the ignorance of their faith. And that's exactly where they, they put you, in hell itself. And then you're miserable all your life. You don't want to be, you married to someone that you don't love. And then the next thing you know, they believe that they're the one that can save you. And you have to listen to them and uh, be their roles and their laws come to yourself right now and say to you, what happened to these religion inside of me? Why do I believe that? Because they made sure that you believe it because they scared you with that lake of fire all the time. And it's not the truth. It's the power of the truth that tells you that you have to understand yourself in the reality of all that is real. You cannot believe that a man can take a glass of water and he's going to appear for your child. It's not working like that. What happened to Hitler? You know, they put a glass of water on his head and he came and killed 50 billion people. So what the hell are you going to do? Try to understand the truth. Try Look at the past. Look at how miserable people were in the past. Right? You come to yourself. You want to be happy? Worship one God and worship the Lord your God and listen to your feeling inside yourself. Anything you want to know about the Bible, I tell you, all you have to do is use the laws of God to understand. The laws of Sabbath works all the time. Anything that confuses you in the Bible, bring it to the laws of Sabbath. Just work it inside yourself for seven times, six times, and the seven you'll have the answer. That's the way it works. See all these commandments. I got the commandment of the Lord to prove that false religion is a falsehood. And anybody that tells me that you have to worship Jesus, well, forget it. It's not the truth. You have to worship the Lord your God. <clears throat> okay, read, I'll read some more of that. Next, we go to the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. In the kingdom of our Lord, we have the hidden treasure of love. It is a hidden treasure because there are so few men that understand this parable of true love. Love hides itself in the burning bushes of the Lord where you can only see the Lord in the center of the bush. 
understand what true love is. The burning bush is the hate of the world, and at the center of it is the face of the Lord your God, love itself. True love is Levi, the son of Jacob, where God displays in your heart the holy feelings that have existed from the beginning of the creation. Love becomes the power to understand the Almighty God, where you can see the face of God, just like Moses saw the face of God through the burning bush. <clears throat> understand here the burning bush. You gotta understand that you, you try to love people, but everything around you makes people feel that, you know, you cannot love them. And you kill yourself to try to understand that with your feelings and your, your understanding of these feelings. Try to understand the burning bush is the hate of the world that people cannot worship and live in the authority of the Lord. The Lord tells you you have to worship one God and you have to give yourself to that one God. And then it tells you the other law. You have to worship with the intention of understanding that God is the truth. And the truth tells you that you have to love your neighbor as yourself. You have to go to the understanding of this truth to live with the Lord your God in the great power of what you are inside of you. God is the truth and the truth is God. And the glory of the truth is to make you an understanding of reality with the greatest power of all. To understand the Lord your God, you must love your neighbor as yourself. And you say, well, this is hard now. And God's supposed to be perfect and these people are imperfect. See, this is what you gotta love. You gotta love the imperfectness of these people. You gotta love them enough to, you know, let's say that if somebody comes to you and he wants to fight with you, you gotta love them anyway because it's hard to love a person that wants to fight with you and tell you evil things. But you have to understand that the Lord set you up for that because you don't love him as you should and you don't love your brother as they should. If you do, come to the understanding of the greatest power of all is to be able to love without prejudice, without stupidity that comes inside of our mind all the time. You can't love with your mind, you have to love with your heart. You have to have the compassion of your heart because that's where the feelings are. It's not in your mind over here because you're not going to be able to love people with the mind. You have to love the people with your heart in the, in the understanding of the reality of the truth. This is where the Levi was part of your heart and he gives you the understanding of others I live in the same world as you do, and I love everybody. I can't, I can't hate another person around me because I live within the reason that the Lord has created me for, and that's all that matters. I can love anyone. I don't care if he's the biggest criminal in the world. It doesn't matter. I still love them because, not because of what they did or what they didn't do or you know, that is not your problem. It's not for you to decide if they did the right thing or the wrong thing. And it's not up to you not to love them because of it. You have to be inside your soul to understand that love does not come from the, you know, the power of what people look like to you in your mind. You have to look at them in your heart. The heart is the greatest part with the understanding of the compassion of the mind, you get to love everybody because love is the truth. Go ahead, Rita. Um, he put a smile on my face because he still loves me. <laughs> I just had to say that. <laughs> the burning bush is all the lies that create hate. And in the center of the burning bush, where you see the face of love, which is the face of God, so few people on earth have understood love because the burning bush around the face of God is all the lies of the world that make you hate people and destroy your love. Love comes from goodness, and if you do good to others, you will love them. But if you use evil dialogue against other people, you will hate them. 
Love is not produced by hate. It is produced by goodness, fairness, justice, and unity with others. Love is only produced when you talk well of others. If you use the wrong of others to explain your heart, you will say the wrong thing at the wrong time, and you will hate. But if you try to protect others with your dialogue, then you will love them. It all depends what you do with your dialogue and how you express yourself. Okay, you got to understand here, the dialogue is almost, uh, I would say 90% of your love. The way you speak and the way you in interpret other people to other people, you got to understand that dialogue is what makes you hate or love. You have to go to the dialogue. And your dialogue is, you know, that's the other son of Jacob, the understanding of Judas, to be able to speak of others in the fragile way of understanding people. It's a fragile way because you got to understand that it's not, it's not easy to love everybody. It's not easy. And you have to make sure that if you want to love people, you got to be kind enough to go into your heart and say, these people are just as good as me. That's all. You, you have to look at them. Like, like, I don't care if a guy's a killer, if he's a bank robber, or he's a child molester, or whatever you call so terrible in this world. It does not matter to you, because you're not these things. So why would you judge him for being what he is? Just try to understand the greatest power of all people in the heart of the human power of understanding God. Because God is the truth. And his son is common sense. So you have to return to the son of God, which is common sense. Not Jesus now. You always got to stick to the, the understanding of one God, one power. And there is no image in God. Don't try to make an image of God. Don't try to make understand that there's a big man with a big white bar. That's not what God is. God is a spiritual power that's inside you, me, and everybody in the world. He is the truth. And if you understand the truth, you can see God in the most perfect way that you can ever imagine because you're understanding of God. God is the truth. He's also common sense. And he's also part of reality that you have inside yourself to make yourself an understanding of the Almighty God. What is, what is God inside your soul? See, this is where people mix themselves up. They look at God and they say, well, he's perfect. No, God has created you imperfect. He wants you to work yourself to perfectness. You see, people mix up God so much, it's almost unbelievable. You see, when you have studied the scriptures as many years as I have, you begin to understand the greatest power of all. It's to be able to understand that in the Lord, there's all these feelings inside of that. And if you make a mistake of judging people, you will come to hate them because this is the natural feeling. It will follow your stupid mind and you have to go back and understand the Lord your God. You cannot judge no one because you have nothing to judge no one with. And you're not as, as, as any better than these people that you're judging. But you're judging because you don't understand the value of life itself. You see, you want to be happy in this world? You got to love everybody around you. Believe me, there's no way that you can be happy unless you love everyone around you. And that's what will make you really happy. I go have breakfast in the morning. I put myself into the understanding that all the people that's in that restaurant there, I love them. And I come and come back home and I do the same thing with my wife. I love them because love is the greatest gift that you can ever receive. And you don't have to judge no one because you're not the judge of, of mankind. You're not the understanding. God is the judge of all mankind. And you have no reason to judge anyone because it's only for your personal feeling that you do that. 
and that is wrong. You got to understand that loving people is the greatest gift of life, and it gives you the life of the understanding of the truth. Okay, go ahead, Rita. Remember that it is your dialogue that will decide which side you're on when it comes to love. If you are on the side of love, you can only see the beautiful treasure and the pearl that has been hidden for so long. You will go and spend everything that you have for love. Love is a treasure that has been hidden, and you cannot find it unless you find that wonderful pearl of being holy in love. If you say all kinds of evil things against your neighbor, you cannot love them because love can only be found in the priesthood of your heart. Love exists in the most powerful way of human thinking where you love your brothers as you love yourself. You will never find love in evil dialogue because love does not come from evil dialogue against your brother. It only comes when you speak in the dialogue of truth where everyone is counted for in the justice, fairness, and the unity of the Lord. You see, you see I, I use these terms there because that's the angel of, rea of love. Justice, fairness, and reality. Those are the three angels of love that's inside of you. You have to be fair with people. You cannot cheat people. You cannot do that because you, you will hate them. You know, and you cannot take anything unfairly from someone. You have to look at yourself in the, in the uh, that you're living in the world that if you do these things, you destroy your love. And it's not the people, it's you that created that. And I think that the last word of that is unity. Make sure that everybody's united on you. They're just as important as you are. You see a nice looking woman, you tell her she's nice looking. You see a beautiful thing on, in life and you try to make him understand. And you, if you go to spread love around, you got to spread love around everywhere you go. And it don't have to be this miraculously thing of love, of falling in love deep into the ground and not be able. This is a love of simple deeds. And it's love you by, by loving people in the most simple way in life that you can ever love anybody. You know, love them for what they look, love them for what they... The, the dialogue to you, love them any way you want, but it's all love if you do it. But if you go against the dialogue against them and you start complaining about them, oh yeah, he's a child molester. Don't be. This, there's no such thing as a child molester in heaven. There's no such thing as a bank robber in heaven. There's no such thing as a killer in heaven. Everybody is a human being in the face of the truth. God made everybody like it. But you're not living on, this, on, this, on the star here. You're living in your heart with your own feelings. So you try to control your feelings by thinking this way. And when you start thinking this way, I tell you, you can love anyone. No matter what he did, no matter how he looked, he could have you know, a hole in his pants, and you could have all kinds, you still can love this person as he is. Long beard, long hair, doesn't matter what he looks like. So long as you start loving people for because of what they have in their heart. That's a different way of understanding love. You love with your heart <coughs> and you love them with your spirit because you understand that the spirit is very fragile. And if you hurt them, they can make you responsible for their sin. Because if you tell a person something stupid, you know what I mean, and you know, insult him, well, he's gonna be mad at you. Of course he's gonna be mad at you because you did something to him and he's not gonna love you and he's not gonna produce, this is not the way to produce love. You, you look at people, you live, you walk on the face of this earth with a heart that tries to make people understand the greatest deed of all, to be able to love each other. And that was created for you 
in the creation of the Lord, he created you with 12 sons of Jacob, and that's one of the sons of Jacob, that's Levi, the third one. And you gotta understand that this love is a feeling that you have inside of you. And once you have it inside of you, you cannot get rid of that love because you love to love people. And it becomes a great obsession inside of you to find the most horrible person and still love him. That's what you've got to do with life. You, co you control that life of yours with your feelings, but you can control them against you. Go ahead, Rita, read some more on that. Now we go to the parable of the net and the understanding of the Lord your God. First, you must understand love because love is the key to understand, to understanding the Lord your God. Then you go to Reuben, faith in the Lord your God. And Simeon is the understanding of that faith. Reuben and Simeon mean the first and second understanding of the sons of Jacob. Levi, which is love, is the third son of Jacob, and Judah, which is dialogue, completes the understanding of the first four sons of Leah and Jacob. You gotta understand here that these four, these first four sons are together here for you to love. If you cannot use these four, first is fate. You love people because of your fate. You love people because of your understanding, and you also love people because you want to love. And you also have a dialogue, because these four sons uh, and the understanding of the greatest power of all is to t take those four sons together and say, these are the four, the four spirits inside of me that will make me love them. You know, first you have faith. Second, you have understanding. You have to understand these people, where they come from and where they are in order to love them. You know, if you see a man from Africa that comes in front of you and he doesn't speak perfect English, you gotta understand all the things about him in order, because that's your, that's your simian inside of you. And then Levi is the greatest power that you have inside yourself. If you're gonna, it's the, determined the moment you start speaking of this person in front of you, you will come to hate him or love him because this is where the decision in the sons of Jacob. See, once you'll understand the sons of Jacob, you'll be able to understand everything. You'll be able to understand the four sons that were born from the slave girl, just as well as you can understand the first four sons of Oliva. You gotta understand that these things are all connected together. And you have to use these together to love people and understand the freedom of being a good human being. And once you do that, you're coming into the understanding of the greatest law of earth, to love your neighbor as yourself. You have to use those four sons because they all part of love. Dialogue is part of love. Love itself is love. And then you have to have understanding. It's, it's all part of it. And then you have to have faith to love them. Because loving them, the faith is what makes you the greatest power of all to understand the love of yourself and the understanding of all that there is. God is the truth. And the truth is the greatest power of all. But you have, you see what happened to religion. They never even bother with the 12 sons of Jacob. They think it's, it's just a story of the scriptures. They don't understand that this is the way you were created. You were created with those 12 sons inside of you. And you have to come to understand that the 12 sons of Jacob is what they make you do good or evil. You, you, cannot understand, you cannot live without that because you cannot understand the greatest power of all that the Lord has placed inside of you. When he created you, he put those 12 sons inside of you. And this is what your life will be all about. You want to be happy in this world? Follow the understanding of the truth and you'll be able to understand the greatest power of all. But you have to go to the truth to come to understand that the truth is God. 
<laughs> and I wanted to add that these 12 sons, 12 verbs, yeah. was never, never explained by the religions of the world. Never. A lot of people just skim over the, the Old Testament because they don't understand it. Roger has been able to explain all of this. That, I'm, I, you know, you've got to understand here that understanding is just as powerful as fate. You've got to understand. You, yeah, and, and it's just as powerful as love because it's all part of these four sons. The first was born from the first wife of Jacob, Le Leah, and this is what he's going to be. Okay. You, <coughs> mu you must understand the kingdom of God to understand the sons of Jacob inside your soul to create faith, understanding, love, and dialogue, which we just explained. This is where the treasures of heaven are hidden. And if you haven't found these treasures, it means that you don't understand how the Lord works inside your spiritual life. You find the hidden treasure by understanding the 12 sons of Jacob. If you do not understand the 12 sons of Jacob, it is because of all the lies you have heard from all the religions of the world. There is nothing more valuable than to understand the 12 sons of Jacob and to live with your natural feelings in the practice of understanding the great power of the family of man. The treasure of the family of man was hidden in the Old Testament, but few people have tried to understand anything that came from the Old Testament. They went to the New Testament and failed to understand the power of the treasure of God. You see, a treasure is hidden in a field somewhere, and you have to look for it to find it. Ex exactly what love is. You cannot love unless you look for it. You cannot understand love unless you look for it. And if you don't talk good about your neighbor, you'll never understand it. It's so important that these four sons are put together into an understanding. They're the first four sons of life itself. And they're the family of man. And with the family of man, I wrote this book for the understanding of that to make sure that people will read the book of life and I call it the book of life because it will give you life. And if you, buy, if you take this book and try to understand it inside your soul with the greatest power of all, you're going to be able to understand that inside of you, this, all of these things are there already. All you have to do is put them alive. And once you have them alive, you begin to understand the greatest power of all. It's to be able to understand that God is the truth and he has created you with that truth and he has created you with that common sense he has created you with that the reality they were all inside of you from the very beginning of your life and you have to grow in the understanding of all i'm an old guy right now i'm 77 years old but you gotta understand that these things has to be place in place throughout your life in order for you to be happy. You can't be happy if you only love your friends. You, no, you'll find something wrong with them because you find something wrong with everybody else. So the thing is, don't try to judge people and try to make people live you, the way you are good. That's not the way it works. You gotta understand the problems of others just like your own. You gotta understand that these people come to understand the greatest glyph of all. And when you come to that, people like to be loved. Everybody likes to be loved. You know, we have a special son, but he loves to be loved. So we love him. I mean, what's so wrong about loving people? And not, he's not always doing what he should do. You know what I mean? But it does not matter what he does. It's only a matter of what you love him. That's the only thing that matters. And we take care of him like he was us, like I take care of my own self. That's the way it is. And if you love the way you want to love in this world, you'll be able to cross over all the mountains of stupidity and 
go right into the understanding of the valley of love and you'll be able to walk on, ground, on dry ground right across the, the Red Sea and come to the land of Canaan all the way across because this is the way it is. Love is what brings you to the kingdom of God. And, and you know, you got to understand the kingdom of God is not just going to come just like this. You have to build it inside your soul and you have to make you understand all these things. <coughs> and if you say, well, I don't know nothing. Well, it's because you never try nothing. You got to understand that you have to love the, your neighbor as yourself. It's a commandment that, that God it gave in you. Love the Lord your God with all your soul and all your mind. That will give you the understanding of loving your brother also. Okay, Rita, I'll read some more of that. Loving God is loving his creation within the family of man. If you miss that great treasure that came out of the family of Jacob, you then created war instead of creating peace. And instead of creating love, you have created hate. You have not created the good values of the kingdom of God, but rather you have created all the misery of the earth and brought upon mankind the superstitions of your dream and the falsehood of your heart. Understand well that the family of mankind comes from the family of Jacob and his 12 sons, who became the 12 verbs of the creation where we come to find all the hidden treasures and the pearl called love. Don't mix up love with hate. The love that I'm talking about must be for all mankind, not just for your friends and those who are like you. Your faith in others must be with the family of all mankind that comes and loves each other in the greatest gift of all time. The hidden treasure of the family of mankind lives in the 12 verbs inside mankind. I will leave nobody out here. There is no one on earth that you are allowed to hate and call your enemy just because you don't like them and you think they are more evil than you. Just look at your own soul before you find anything wrong with your brother. <coughs> that's beautiful. That's as beautiful as I can write it. I wrote this book and I'm so proud of it because I wrote this book for the, for the power of all of mankind. This is what I try to do. It's to bring the word that was hitting in the scriptures forever. See, this has been hitting in there from the very beginning of time. And the Lord put it there because he wanted you to come to understand the family of humanity. He wanted you to make yourself in, in, the, in the greatest gift of all, to be able to understand that God did not make a terrible world like it is right now. He made a beautiful world. Man is the one that made the world so terrible. And it, it's so, so crazy because not loving people, you'll cheat them. Not loving people, you'll betray them. Not, you see, all of these things come from mankind. God has made you to love others as yourself because he didn't want you to, to cheat them. He didn't want you to betray them. He didn't want you to use prejudice against them. He wanted you to be in a heart that loves everyone. And that's where it comes from. It comes from the greatest power of humanity that's ever lived inside of you. You live in the greatest glory of all that it is in this world to be able to love your brother as yourself and try to understand that if there's something about somebody else, look inside your own heart and you have the same exact thing there that you don't love people with. This is what it is, to love others. And when you find something wrong against someone, it's because there's something wrong inside your own heart. This is how you work and understand the greatest glove, the greatest gift of all, love. And when you cross over to loving your brother as yourself, you are in the most magnificent way of thinking that you can ever imagine. And, and see, this is, you know, I've watched a movie, The Seven Magnificent. And I look at my heart and I try to find that. And to love people is to be able to understand the magnificent power 
of other people. And you're going to come. And, you know, God made us imperfect for that purpose. So we can learn to be better and we can increase in number. And that's why this world is like this, because God did not make it perfect. He made it imperfect for you to find the perfectness of it. And this is inside of you. Go ahead, Rita, read some more. Next, we come to understand the power of a prophet without honor. Understand that a false prophet teaches from his mind and fools others. He takes no account of his sins, and his false faith is within himself to be uplifted by other people in the grace of his own soul. He finds pleasure in praising the God of his choice, where the image of a man has become his God. This is because the image of a man is much easier to understand than a God that he could not see or hear. God does not live in the image of a man. He is not an image of anyone, and there is no one that can stand for God. I read, you see, when I read this here, and I tell you, I'm like everybody else, I'm amazed at my own writing because you understand that you have to go back to the creation itself to understand yourself. Try to make you an understanding. I, I, read, I, I wrote this book for the purpose of all human beings. And it, it broke my heart that nobody bought it. You know what I mean? And the, no, thing, they have. the, the thing is, it's to be able to understand that the greatest power of all is to be able to understand that, you know, if you do what is right, you will always be in the right. If you do what is wrong, you'll always be in the wrong and you won't be happy. You have to do what is right for everybody around you in order to accomplish what is right. And it's not something that comes inside of you for the purpose of the greatest glory of all. You have to come love the Lord your God. You see, when I try to make people understand, if you want to love God, you will come to love your brother as yourself because it is part of it. We all part of the same family. The Lord is our, is our father, but he's part of a family, like your father's part of the family. And you understand that inside of you, there's feelings in there that has to be, you know, worked on in order to make him perfect in the eyes of the Lord. This is the way it is. You cannot be born knowing everything, but now you can learn to understand the greatest power. To read my book, you can come to understand that the greatest glory of all is to be able to understand the magnificent power of love in the world. God is the truth, and the Son of God is common sense, and the angel of reality is real. You have to understand the real power of the God that created us. This is his God, and that's his teaching to us to teach. See, most people never understood this teaching before. So me, I began to understand it after 70 years of it, began to understand that inside my soul, this is where the book lives, and it lives inside of me. And I wrote it according to the laws of God. You know, you have to come to understand that this, this book is the book of my life. This is, this is where I was born and to raise. I came into the world to bear witness to the truth, and that's what I'm doing. Bear witness to what is true and live in what is real and right. God bless you. Okay, you got anything else to read here? The false prophet has produced no value of truth and is guided by his little mind of Eve that makes him bite the people, the apple. Sorry, let me read that again. The false prophet has produced no value of truth and is guided by his little mind of Eve that makes him bite the apple on the forbidden tree of Satan at the center of the garden of intelligence. 
God placed the forbidden tree right at the center of the garden where organized religion would bite that false, pro false apple and eat the forbidden fruit that killed the spirit of Adam. Mankind bites into the fruit and spirit, and both mind and spirit become the loss of his soul. Man had to suffer because of the falsehood of the forbidden fruit of organized religion that made the fruit sour. Everybody bit into the forbidden fruit of good and evil and made themselves, in their own mind, good over the evil of others. They thought of themselves to be God's chosen ones in front of others. And you understand well here that God planned the whole thing. From the very beginning of the creation, everything was planned and lived accordingly. Because God said, okay, now, I'm going to make people imperfect. So they go towards perfectness and try to understand perfectness. But it's been 7,000 years, 6,000 years from that. So we come to understand that in order to be able to come to graduate from the truth, you have to come and learn. And this is why I really write in the book all the time. Self-understanding, self-learning brings you self-control. And if you want to control yourself with the truth, you have to work on it until it makes sense to you. And the Lord God of all, come and understand the greatest power of all. To be able to understand the truth, in the understanding of the truth, you have to work yourself at it. Until you come to the day of the Lord and you say, to the Lord, I did my best to understand the truth. But if you don't do your best to understand the truth, what do you do? You try not to understand it. So you're not going to succeed in the kingdom of God. To succeed in the kingdom of God, you have to succeed with the power and the understanding of the truth for all time to come. God is the truth and he has the power to give you a happy life if you obey his law. And I say that, if you obey his law. Try to understand the laws of God and the love, the two greatest love, the two greatest commandments that he gave you, to love the Lord your God with all your soul and all that you are, and then love your brother as yourself. You know what it means to love your brother as yourself? It means that there's no selfishness in your heart that cannot overtake from other anything. You have to give to other all your selfishness and you just come to understand the greatest power of the Lord your God. To understand that this is the truth and the truth stained by reason to be God. You know, it's so easy to understand the truth because it makes sense inside of us. It makes all the common sense in the world and you fit into the world that you live in. You see, before you looked like you didn't fit in there. It was too evil for you or too good for you. But you have to understand that the Lord God of all. Okay, now we're coming to the close of our show and we are coming to the understanding of the greatest power of all, to love the Lord your God. This is what I leave you. Love the Lord your God with all your soul and all your might. And then try to understand the love of your brother the way I explained it to you here. You know, you read my book, come to the understanding of the book, you come to have the greatest power of all, to be able to process yourself into intelligence. Thank you for... You got anything to add here, Rito? No, not yeah. really. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is this is my better half here. Yeah. I love it all my life. You know. Uh, thank you for tuning in. Good good night and good luck to all of you.
Sometimes life just happens. Don't worry. Farmington Motorsports will get you back on the road and at a fair price. From towing to tires, emissions to transmissions. Our ASC certified techs do it all. Farmington Motorsports is a family-run business. We're a Napa Auto Center and AAA approved. We work on all makes and models from preventative maintenance to major repairs. And every repair is backed by our two-year, 24,000-mile nationwide warranty. When life happens to you, don't worry. Farmington Motorsports. Follow us on Instagram at nutmeg.tv.